What's up guys? Welcome back to another Dark Souls 2 lore through. I've <clears throat> leveled up and gotten rid of stuff so we can focus on stuff. I did want to uh, join this <clears throat> covenant because we're going to join all the covenants. Or I did already. Hold on. Let me see if I entered this one or not off screen. <clears throat> okay, I might have left. I might have done it off screen. Um, which means I'm gonna have to leave it because I want to be able to summon. Huh? You don't get like a, a ring. I guess you you win a ring when you. <clears throat> when you level up completely in that covenant, but as I say, we can't summon, and in order to do the quest lines, we have to be able to summon. So, so anyway, <clears throat> oh, you know what I did get? Oh my! I got this. The champion's tablet. Show the names of the great greatest victors of the Company of Champions Covenant. This tablet, chiseled from Victor Stone, which is the stone that we prayed to up there, is engraved with the names of the brave warriors who have offered the most awe stones, as if they were epitaphs honoring their lives. So yeah, basically the way that that covenant works is that <clears throat> when those red phantoms invade, like non-player characters. Like, not real people, but like the ones in the game. Um, if you defeat them, you get an awe stone. And then you can uh, you can offer them up. It makes more sense to do it on New Game Plus because you get a lot more <clears throat> red fandoms. So you get a lot more awe stones. <clears throat> Excuse me. But anyway, um, we're going to go over to this area, and now we can see that the light was lit up there and um, at the top of the door entering here, and now we can see that Lysia has moved here, and and she helps you move this so that you can get to the other side. Oh, hello there. An honor to see you again. This room is not as it seems. There are two, not one part is leading out and only this lovely thing reveals the other path and this you lovely thing only runs on miracles shall I provide you with one <clears throat> so she's saying that this thing in the center moves the path goes to one side or the other, <clears throat> but it, it, it requires faith, it requires miracles to move. And so she can do it. Um, or maybe if we master miracles, we can do it. Um, I think the thing here is that she's trying to be a little deceptive here with you. Um, you know, when we have her move the path, keep an eye on her. I, I don't know. It's hard for me to say. Um, and there's some things that I don't want to say because we'll get to them later, but... Um, <clears throat> apparently she's trying to be deceptive with us, with saying it runs on miracles, because it's well, part of her thing to, like, fool people into <clears throat> having more faith, I guess. <laughs> But anyway, let's hear what she has to say now that she's here. To cast miracles, you must have strong faith in the gods. Miracles began as tales told by gods. We preserve their will with law, pray to their greatness, and are blessed in return. You must nourish your faith. Miracles have been passed down through us since the first flame. Isn't it extraordinary to think they've existed since the very origins of the world? And now, you can have this power for yourself. 
Don't miss out on the road to enlightenment. <clears throat> As to be expected, the understanding that this time has about what happened during the first flame is very simplified. Um, I don't know, that's not all that amazing. Um, and not worth talking about a ton, but, you know, Lysia talks about the age, the first flame as being at the beginning of time. Certainly might be at the beginning of what one conceives of time now, but she also talks about that the miracles were passed down since then, but again, that's still not the case as we know, but, <clears throat> um, I She's from Lindelt, which is the cleric, you know, faith capital of the world. Yet, at the same time, I don't understand her motives to convert everyone. What is the first flame? Well, it's... <laughs> You're not ready to comprehend it, I'm afraid. You require more faith and more miracles. Many more miracles. Um... I've leveled Faith up to 50, and I think I bought everything from her, and I don't think she says anything different about that. I think that she just doesn't know what the first flame is, as she demonstrated by explaining her understanding of it. To cast miracles, you must have strong miracles with... And I believe she just has... The one thing I was thinking about potentially grabbing from her... Is this? But I don't know how much faith it gives you, and I don't know how much I need to talk to Falcon. Anyway, it doesn't look like she has anything new. Let's move the path. So, yeah, I mean, she like touches this gizmo, but then kneels down to pray as we're praying. Go ahead. Miracles have been... What is the... You require... May the power offer your souls to the god. Um... I mean, maybe that's it. Maybe just something very simple, like she wants more souls because she's undead and she's using, like, religion as a way to get donation, but... <clears throat> um, as we'll see later, she has a little bit more to her storyline and, um... I don't know if that tells the whole story. But yeah, I mean... We'll learn later that there's a key for this, and I don't know, we'll get to that part later, but I, I don't know if she's necessarily being that deceptive, or I don't know. I don't know what all that indicates. Rouge water. <clears throat> what is Rouge water's origin? What is that? <laughs> of unknown origin. But it's holy, so it's a cleric thing. I guess I should be very careful. As I don't know what's coming, theoretically. Kind of weird to play through the game, like doing this around every corner, but that ends up how I play a lot of the first playthrough. All right, so there's this guy here. Oops, he's wearing the Hexer set. I don't think that he'll talk to us, but I hope he will. I don't know who you are, but believe me, the frailty of the weak disrupts. The dark. Yeah. <sighs> well, I'll probably have to level up faith at some point. But I don't think like he has any time based things, so I can do it late in the game and I think it's maybe just ten each. Um, which would mean that I need to go up six. I mean, I don't know. We'll figure it out. <clears throat> but this is Falcon. Um, yeah. 
He doesn't move, he doesn't do anything. Now we're in the Huntsman's Cups. Now... Um... That cops is meant to be like policeman. Even though it's spelled kind of weird. Um, oh, I guess I should talk a little bit about. Oh, these guys are in slightly different places. Um, is this guy still? So, basically, um,. The popular opinion right now is that the crossroads where Lycia helps you um, is uh, the place between Alkin and Ven. And to the right is Hyde's Tower of Flame and the Lost Bastille and, and then the, the bell which we, we kind of learned from the bell thing, it's a little confusing, but the bell of Alkin is in Ven, <clears throat> and so we knew that, you know, we were in Ven when we were in the Lost Bastille. Now we're entering a whole nother place over here, and we'll find out um, a lot of the stuff in here kind of points towards it being Alkin. We'll get to it at the, at the time, of course, but... Um, what I wanted to just highlight with that is that this, like the Lost Bastille, like this, the king of this world, um, the king of this land or whatever, also had an issue with the Undead Curse and uh, needed to... Uh, hunt down the undead and do something about it. Well, that was interesting. I've never seen a half parry in this game, to be honest. It kind of seemed like it could be half parry. Um, so anyway, the Huntsman Cops is basically this, the equivalent of the, uh, the Lost Bastille, but it's just done in a very different way um, in Alkin than it was in Ven. Um, like the Flexile Sentry, I do love this image here. Like the Flexile Sentry, Alkin has its own form of torturing its undead. Can I not lock onto this boy? Oh my god. I did not mean to attack there. I thought I was going to go off the edge. Not sure what this building is here, but um Oops. Um I didn't go and practice uh um, parrying or anything. I just, I don't know, I'm getting really lucky right here. Um, get the rogue armor. Hollow Thieves. Surprisingly sturdy. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Oh, interesting, I landed on a place. 
They put the guy in a different place. I should know. I should know that I should be wary. Um, I'm just going to do this for now. No sense in preventing ourselves from having our full health while we have the abilities here. a torch. Might as well do this again while we... We're gonna go over here. Oh, I see there's some guys down here. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you can open up the windows here. I forgot about that. Not sure the exact purpose besides just getting more light in here, but. It's kind of a cool feature to knock those out and then hmm, I heard someone summon signature. Okay. Cracked red eye orb there. We're gonna wanna grab that. Well, for all I know, it's a life gem. No. But I'm going to grab the uh, bonfire and the shortcut first here so that. Oh, is this someone or is this. Yeah, just a person. Okay. Some people playing today. Alright. one of those things that, you know, you get used to it and then you do it and then I think you run okay okay good Ferris Lockstone and Token of Fidelity that's good oh right, that's the thing I died on but you can run in there Okay. Okay. So let's look at the token of fidelity. Token recognizing that the owner has traveled worlds to others to help others. When other when in other worlds it can also be used to restore the master of the world's HP, but this is only a secondary effect of the item. Simply carrying these tokens shows the depth of the holder's fidelity. So this is incidentally what we need to uh, um, to to get into the blue sentinels. And I think it's kind of cool that the thing to get into the blue sentinels in Van is here in. Uh, in Alkin, although that doesn't, the token, the other one that, the, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, okay, I guess we're going to do this.
Well, I guess this one I could do this. Oh, can they like shoot them now? Monastery charm, of course. Alright, so the only way to do this now is to go down, right? Let's try it. Oh my dear lord. There were like those dark guys here last time, or at least one dark guy. Is that gonna get me? Oh cool, that was all my great soul arrows. Okay. Titanite shirt, nice. Torch. Oh, there's still another one. Okay. These guys drop. Poison moss, still, which is good. Old radiant life gem, I guess maybe they drop that too. Okay, I have no idea what this is. Forgot what this was. If it's the same. <laughs> Ricard's Rapier. For no reason. An exquisitely decorated rapier said to belong to a prince who appears in an ancient tale. There are numerous variations of the story of the prince who wandered from lands and eventually became undead. The majority of these tales end in tragedy, but there are some exceptions. Well, we met Ricard in, uh, in Dark Souls 1, of course. He was described as a prince as well. We found him in Sen's Fortress. It made sense that he was in Sen's Fortress because that's where like all the lands, you know, were coming together. Anyone who became undead, they uh, they uh, went to Sen's to kind of succeed Gwyn, I guess. I don't know if that's what everyone thought they were doing, but. bunch of these guys hanging off the edge. Okay, we get the bandit's knife. Oh, I can hear the bonfire from here. Is there a shortcut to the bonfire? Can I just go through here now? Alright. Alright, come up. Come up. Okay. Ooh, small yellow burr. I think that's new. Okay, come up. <gasps> All right. All right, now we can light it up too. All right, let's see here. Small yellow burr. <clears throat> Boost lightning defense. These burrs bloom magnificently on a shrub every few, year, few years. Their color and effect determined by soil quality in recent weather, known to have been used in rituals long ago. Again, I love how many like plants and medicinal things are used in this game. Um, and then we got the bandit's knife. A knife with a slightly broad single edge. 
Its tip is shaped to leave a wound that won't easily close. Hmm. Interesting. I like how it's really bright coming from the windows, but from the door it's still dark. This will heal up here. Sure. Did that guy just jump up here? That's not a Dark Souls thing. All right. <clears throat> um, I don't know what this does because I, I mean this is a guy that I mean is he uh... okay? He does a lot of damage. So do I though. Oh, he kicks. And is he like a permanently del- Like, cause I'm gonna go rest of the bonfire, so is he just gonna respawn and then when I go down to the other thing? Probably gonna do that section later anyway. Okay. Um... Bridge approach. It would be really nice if there was a uh, okay. If there was another shortcut right up there that you could uh, that you could unlock, so that you could get through up to the whatever that that big coliseum thing up there. Um, where did that guy go? I don't want a surprise. Again, to change displacement. Whatever. Small orange bear again. I don't know why we're getting those here. Um, I don't. Oh. Bye. I don't know if you can parry this guy. Certainly can backstab. Oh, wow, okay. We're doing okay. Um, and yeah, I guess I have the soul arrow now. So, I can take all these guys down. They're not too big of a deal, but you know. Forlorn. Uh, okay, is that a human? Okay. Fun. If this is a guy or not. We'll see once I get back in there. He kind of looked like he might be an NPC though, especially when he was walking. 
away. Plus, I parried him. Uh-huh. So you come down, so I have to kill you every time. Okay, great. He's an NPC, then we can fight him a little differently. Is that the Dark Sword? It's probably also why he let me heal. He does have quite a bit of health. Yeah, and he also didn't. Um. combo. Hi, Forlorn. continue on the area uh, yeah so for new NPCs and stuff like that like obviously I'm not gonna know if there's a story behind that guy or whatever um, but I guess we'll find out if there is Drops his uh, weapons, which are pretty cool, actually. I mean, if you have the build for it. Uh, do we get aromatic goose? Yeah. Yeah, we've read that before. Um. Okay. Huh. This guy's running away. Like he actually is running away. Huh. That's cool. I wonder. Wonder what he's gonna show us. So yeah, here's the first. Is this a bashful ray? That's definitely a uh, NPC. Morning star. I think we've read that. Yeah. Um. This is one of the. What's up? You dragon? Oh, you have like the claws on. Why are you doing that? <clears throat> Let's go up this way and see what this guy is trying to lead us to. I mean, is it just that he's leading us to this ambush, or what's the deal? This is so cool. I love, you know, enemies with different. Oh, and he's got an item. I love NPCs with different, like... What are you looking at, Bashful Ray? Oh, I thought I killed one. Oh my gosh. Just barely. Sorry, I'm like, I'm being so annoying right now. Um, 
I like NPCs that have different, like, AI from the rest. Um, oh, there's dogs here now. Really, you couldn't handle that bashful ray? Is there still a guy that jumps on you? No. Nope. Bashful ray, take care of the guy that... What are you looking at? There he is. Oh, interesting. It's a lot more integrated than last time. Thanks. Um, so yeah, that lowered that bridge, but we have some other stuff to grab here. Oh, cool. Got a cyan knight in here now. Again, I don't know. I guess these are maybe trying to be the more like the Black Knights of this game. I don't know if that analogy works because you fight so many of them later. I get the Soul Spear, which is Logan's sorcery. Sorcery that fires souls shaped into a spear pierces enemies, causing heavy damage. The spell is said to have been devised by a master sorcerer, but his name is long forgotten. Well, we talked about the fact that Griggs. Is this a mimic? Griggs was like nice. Master Logan is, you know, looking for the truth and only time, you know. <clears throat> the like history will will be uh dispassionate. And I was saying, well, we'll see what happens in Dark Souls 2. Um so yeah, we're going to go and do that. Another that that'll be one of the uh a pickup episode where we kind of go through that area. For now, let's continue on with the main story, or the main part of the game. Anyway, I don't know if that is, like, history being extremely dispassionate, because uh, we don't even know who created that sorcery any longer. Alright, so... Ooh. I gotta say, the, the new AI for some of this stuff isn't always working that great. So here's another example of how the uh, undead were treated in this area. Um, okay, so in the past, there was a guy in here. Oh, there he is, between two skeletons. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to him. In a second. Ooh, that came out quick. Get him, Bashful Ray. Oh, there's another guy here. Oh. Oh, he's running away. Again. Um. Okay, well. There's an area up here, which I'd never go to on a normal playthrough, but let's do it. Oh, Merciless Rowena invades here now. That's cool. I don't have a ton of... She drops her set, and because she's a red invader, It sucks to, <laughs> cause she'll she won't respond again. Oh, and this is where the undead lockaway key is. Cool. Um, I guess let's kill you. Okay, that goes down there. And what was that? Oh, this. Okay, I was like, they've changed the layout even, but that was just. We'll get there. 
All right, well, I can go back now and open up the thing, which I think I'll do. I like that format better. Like, sound effects are cool. I like uh, getting, like, fighting the Phantom, you know, like a arena. I used to fight her, like, right on the edge here, right before the boss fight, which is, like, I don't know. Wasn't the great. What item did I see? Huh. I don't know what that is. Oh, let's read the Undead Luckway key, too. Key to the prison and the huntsman's cops. The undead hunts during the reign of the old Iron King took place in this forest, and the cells in which the undead were held still stand there to this day. However, the march of time has eroded away any difference between the captors and the captives. Yeah, and I guess these are the cops here in that we're fighting that have kind of become undead. So yeah, we have an old Iron King who is another king and uh, is also dealing with the undead again. Who are you? I thought you were that bastard for a moment. You've set me free. Now I can find him. The cheeky prick. He won't know what hit him. This is yet another semi fan servicey thing. Um, this guy's name is Creighton. I think he's meant to be La Trek. Um, and he has a beef with Pate, who is Patches. And again, in the original, there was a like a rivalry between La Trek and Pate, Patches. But but he doesn't act like La Trek at all and. In the original, they don't actually interact all that much, but anyway, this is Creighton, and we'll see him along a path going forward here. I am Creighton of Mira. I travel from land to land to hone my blade. I've heard this land was full of danger. I thought it would suit me perfectly. I joined forces with a man on the way, but he was no more than a backstabbing knave. He took the first chance he had to try and off me. I decided to set a trap for him here. But then I got trapped myself. I can't believe that I was so dense. Thank the stars that you came along. <clears throat> yeah, Patches, or Pete. Treated us that way too. He says he's from Mira, which we know is the land of Lucatil, which is always at war, and is home to the people that fight and people who are into the order. Um, also, looks like he has reindeer antlers on his vest. I guess we can look at that later. That might relate to uh, some of the symbology in Bloodborne, too. <clears throat> anyway, I don't think that we could necessarily draw a parallel between Kareem and. Mira, if this guy is supposed to be electric, but because Lugatil is not shifty, at least not yet. You be careful of him. A pint, I think he said. Where's this rather unusual ring? You know it when you see it. I've seen this type before. He kills entirely for the pleasure of it. Sure, I won't be his last victim. The man's better off dead. Tell me, he's a slick talker. It's a bunk lame for ya. Well, we all have to decide between Creighton and Pate who to kill. So put in your votes now. Pate, the man with a strange ring. Watch out for the slimy rat. And don't you believe a word he says. I'll find a common footpad and put an end to his roguery. <laughs> Pate. 
Yeah, so again, they mentioned the Strange Ring. I don't know if that's something they added to this game or... Like, in other words, um, you know, it, he... Uh, he mentions a ring before, but, you know, like, we don't get it, we don't see it, so I don't know if that's something that we'll ever see, or if we're just meant to look at him and just be like, oh, yeah, he has a ring. Alright, well, let's go take care of the, uh, the boss quick here. There are some, uh, some necromancers in this area. I guess they were like, oh, this is the catacombs. Okay. So yeah, these are the guys you see in the Undead Crypt. I don't know if that matters. Oh no, that's a flame butterfly. <laughs> Completely useless item. Well, we need the flame butterflies, what am I saying? Wait, what? Oh, right, okay. I think that's like the original. That's one of the necromancers. So yeah, right here is where Rowena spawns. Let's see a fog wall there. You can see one there too. We're gonna open up this first. Yes, we can. Necromancers. Oh, nice. Okay. There was a necromancer in an inaccessible place, but okay. If they're all right here, that will be nice. Okay. Oh, and they give you a way to easily light your torch. Um, oh, they still have an item over there. I'm not getting it. <laughs> I don't like the parkour in this game, so I'm not gonna... I refuse to do it. Oh my gosh. I don't know what all this stuff is. I'll check it in a second. Oh, that's Creighton. Cool. And an SS Flash Shard. Well, we'll definitely get Creighton. These guys also drop stuff, and it's pretty rare. see these dark pots that give us dark which curse us that's the thing that actually curses us in this game although the curse just makes it so that like you would die like so it just lowers your health as if you had died once huh I thought there was a uh, pyromancy over here or off of one of these but oh there that guy goes again Um, the other thing that's... Ooh, magic mace. The other thing that's supposed to... Like, this is supposed to be a shortcut to the boss, but I don't know that it's all that helpful. What are you doing? 
I gotta get him. <laughs> like, I gotta admit, this is very entertaining. That there's this random hollow that runs away from you and probably just drops a, a life gem. How are you supposed to get him? Am I supposed to cut him off at the pass? Wow. This is so weird. This is probably the last thing you guys want to watch. He really breaks free there. Oh my god, I should have locked on. But I'm getting closer, so... I... come on, lock on. the fastest oh, are you kidding me I guess what am I even trying to do here Fuck me. <laughs> who knew this would be the hardest part of the level for me oh god why why Oh my dear. Oh my god. Okay, I take it back. That guy's annoying. Okay, I still have six. Um. Yeah, let's just do the boss. Um. I might. Throw a repair powder on here if I get too low. Which I don't have the luxury to do all that often, but. Alright. Definitely gonna grab Creighton. Was a, uh, I think it was flame swath. Okay. Oh, combustion. Okay. Elementary spell for new pyromancies. Simple, simplest pyromancy of all. I love combustion. It's one of my favorite pyromancies. All right. Let's try this silly boss out. Skeleton Lords. So yeah, I mean, this is kind of a mobby boss or whatever, which is, they definitely do like more unique bosses in this game than in one. I mean, that's probably going to offend a lot of people, but I mean, they attempt to do the most diverse things in this game, and I'm not saying it always works, but I'm just saying that that is a fact. Well, it might not be a fact. People are like, oh, but if you consider the whatever, then... Oh, see, this is a bad thing. Now we have... Oh, 
Well, these are a new enemy, I think. Pretty sure I, that wasn't. Oh, nice. They are weak. They are weak. And then this last guy does bone skeletons, but, you know, nothing is like the bone skeletons of the original game. Those are just brutal. And I didn't even show that off because I didn't even want to try it. Two bone skeletons? Maybe they made them harder and two is more balanced. Um, yeah, okay. Well, let's read what the skeleton wards have to say here. We'll probably learn more about them from their weapon than from their. Wait, what? Oh. So, soul of a skeleton lord who reigned from deep within the huntsman cops. The old Iron King commanded the capture of all undead, but those charged with the task were overcome by the curse. So, I guess these are just the uh, the ones that the old Iron King appointed to kind of. They're the they're the ruined sentinels of the Huntsman cops. I guess there's a parallel with that in the, the sense too that there's three of them and there's three ruined sentinels and. So not only is Dark Souls similar, like, have elements that evoke, you know, Dark Souls 1, but it has areas that evoke itself, which I guess is pretty cool. I guess it's kind of like a fractal. Alright, well, with that interruption that we had earlier and beating that boss, uh, we're going to end it now here on the... Uh, The next, um, why am I even doing this? It's probably like someone who's gonna invade me and kill me in one hit. Alright. Alright, well, that'll do it. Till next time. Bye.